what's up mob crew I'm Chris in today's video I'm gonna go over the young guy sketch and more importantly how it could have been possibly produced by phenotyping or a combination of phenotyping and a witness I'll explain that and more in today's video also today's missing person case is Joseph Michael Bolduc uh, last seen in Goodyear Arizona he will be featured at the end of my video, so please stay until the end for that. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the channel, everybody, where we cover murder, mystery, to the paranormal. If you are new to the Delphi case, I would consider checking out this video first to get caught up on the story of the Delphi murders of Abby and Libby. Back in the conference of 2019, they released a second sketch, which many call the Young BG sketch. This was a shock to many considering the first sketch actually resembled the person in the video but this new young BG sketch does not look anything like the first sketch or the guy in the video. And many people started to speculate many different theories as to why. The first sketch apparently came from at least two different witnesses, both described a middle-aged man wearing a scarf over his face. And so the sketch is a combination of witness statements and the still images from the video. And that is why the first sketch clearly looks more like the guy in the video. The second young guy sketch came from a completely different witness who described reddish brown hair, approximately 200 pounds, and supposedly was sure enough to mention he didn't have blue eyes. He was also described to have a thin goatee and mustache which is clearly not in the sketch. Maybe the artists and law enforcement believed he would have shaved soon after to change his appearance, so maybe they left that detail out. When the public became aware of the Anthony shots and catfishing angle back in late 2021, some started speculating the young guy sketch was actually a sketch of the model used in the catfishing account and the original sketch was the killer. Although interesting, it is highly unlikely. Then when people got wind that Kagan Klein's father Tony had a violent past with his stepkids and ex-wife among other creepy activities, people started thinking that the sketches could be Tony and Kagan, hence the young sketch and the older sketch. But besides people matching the older one to Kagan and the young guy sketch to the father, their the actual physical appearance of Tony and Kagan do not match that of BG's in my opinion. I believe Kagan is too big and Tony is too tall. I don't think either one is BG. So at the five year anniversary, there was an interview on News Nation with Marnie and Doug Carter and all, all and although Carter wasn't in the mood to answer many questions, he did open up to one and revealed that they are only looking for one killer and that if you combine the two sketches, you will unmask the killer. Take both of those sketches and we'll put them together and then remove them and the killer will be behind them. So, so is the there's sketch pieces a comp of, of, uh, Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, please. I was just gonna ask, is the sketch, how does the public receive this information? Is the sketch, the ultimate suspect, a combination of these two images put on this body that we're seeing on screen right now? Yes, I believe, I, I believe that we'll, 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 we'll be able to put the two of them together and drop the, drop the sketch and, and that, will be the, that will be the person responsible for the death of Abby and Libby. Some believe this to be that the killer was wearing a mask when approaching the girls on the bridge, which, although not a bad theory, unless he had connections with Tom Cruise and his team, I don't think this is the case. But wearing something like a fake nose and mustache would not be a big stretch to think that he had some kind of disguise on, a.k.a. the scarf that he had. But then when I watched the captain's video 
where he talks about phenotyping and shows an interview with Kelsey German explaining how they produced the new sketch using new technology. Here's the interview. We really have two sketches. Um, one that is older and one that is newer. The newer one coming from new information that was generated, new technology is what they told us. Um, generated, new technology is what they told us. Um, so looking more into Snapshot, where they can produce an image with only a partial DNA profile, where it gives the ratio to likely to unlikely when it comes to skin color, hair color, eye color, and etc. And looking more into the research, they can build a profile, sometimes even with a partial DNA or weak DNA. So something I found interesting is that when they produce an image of the predicted person, it defaults at age 25, which I found interesting since the young guy sketch looks like he is in that age range. And another thing I noticed, when it comes to the prediction images, most of them don't have any facial hair. But when I was looking at this graph of age progression, you could see that it will eventually produce facial hair as a person gets older, but typically all the defaults don't have facial hair. Also, I was thinking they could have turned the snapshot image into a composite while having that witness who supposedly came up with the young BG sketch there to help with the sketch. And so it's almost a combination of the witness and a snapshot, which makes sense. But I believe law enforcement didn't want the public or more importantly, the killer to know that they had his DNA profile. So why hide that from the killer? Well, if they have his profile, but he hasn't committed any offenses before or since this crime, he is not in the database. Law enforcement could be hoping he slips up somewhere with a minor offense and gets his DNA entered into the system would be my guess. But I'm sure law enforcement has their reasons. So let me finish by saying this is all speculation, of course. But to me, this makes more sense than most of the other theories out there since we're not getting any answers from law enforcement about the confusion on why the sketches are so different from each other. But if this was from phenotyping and is how he looked when he was a little younger, that would make sense since the audio of the guys down the hill sounds more like a middle-aged man. So let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please smash that like button. If you are new to the channel, click subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss an upload. Please consider supporting my channel by becoming a member. Today's missing person case is Joseph Michael Bolduc, missing from Goodyear, Arizona. He was last seen in August of 2017 when authorities dropped him off into the town of Goodyear after towing his car and leaving him with no phone or wallet. He has brown eyes and brown hair. Please take a close look. Please take care of yourself and be sure to tell someone you love them. And I love you all. Thank you.